Hello everyone and welcome back to our continuing series on Enterprise Architect and Related Tooling. I'm joined again today by Steve McGuire. How are you, Stephen? I'm very well, thank you, Tom. That's the way, that's the way. And today I believe we're looking at model views inside Enterprise Architect. Yeah, that's right, Tom. It's another one of my favourite features. It, uh, it, it allows me to, to create all sorts of views of the model that are different from the project browser uh, view that people are quite familiar with. So we, as always, will uh, start with our perspective. We have our perspective there as, uh, as UML, or UML. But in fact, in this particular video, uh, we're not going to be doing uh, very much uh, direct modeling. So we're going to be looking at some of these tool features. As you said, uh, we're going to be looking at the model uh, views. So that the model views is available from uh, the focus window. And for those that are not familiar with the layout of the, the ribbons, the start ribbon has a panel on it, the all windows panel and a design icon, which if I click that, it gives me a very handy list of all the kind of windows that I might be uh, useful. Now, the focus window there is one of them. I'm going to click on that and that will immediately uh, open up the window. It goes back into a position uh, where I have used it before. And if you notice, there are a number of different panels on this window. There's model views, there's working sets. We've covered working sets in a previous video, but that working sets is there. We've also got a quick find. So this is an alternative way to find something. If I'm looking for something like uh, payments, for example, spell that correctly, um, you know, I can just click that there and it gives, gives me a very quick, um, you know, view of the things that are related there uh, to payments. Also, I can revisit uh, diagrams that I've uh, been looking at. So I can just double click on uh, on those ones there and see the diagram just opens up immediately. Um, and we've got, you know, other things, uh, documents and uh, windows and uh, files that I've been looking at. But let's return our, our focus to model views. So the model views window has got a number of things that uh, just pop up. Uh, we've got recent, which is showing us the elements that we've been looking at in the last couple of days. There they are. Are uh, all there, and so they pop up. But we're interested in um, looking at specifically this model views here. So we're going to create uh, a new views folder. Now let's uh, let's do something which we haven't done uh, before either. Let's imagine that we're doing uh, the, the executive team have heard about our project and heard about the fact that we're using this tool and that, uh, are very impressed with the productivity gains that we've got from using the tool, and they want a little presentation. Now, you know, a lot of modelers will, you know, go out to their their favorite presentation tool, whether that was, you know, something like Microsoft PowerPoint or one of the Google tools or any any other type of tool. And they might, you know, think about being able to uh, to do that. We have got tools and integrate with Microsoft Office, but let's look at a slightly different internal way we can do this. So let's call this CXO presentation or presentations. We might want to be doing a number of presentations. Let's go OK to that. And now we see we've got another view here. I want to click on that one there. I've got a number of options. My favorite uh, my favorite mouse stroke, the right mouse click. And I've got uh, properties, new search folder, new favorites folder, and new slideshow, Tom. So uh, I can click on new slideshow. And I'm going to call this, uh, you know, requirements. Uh, requirements. Uh, and design. So there's my slideshow there. And um, I can simply, you know, add uh, diagrams to this. So let's have a look and say, well, you know, what might the CEO be interested in? And this is the advantage, Tom, of placing these two windows using this layout facility, placing them um, juxtaposition like this, where I can pick, like cherry pick things from the project browser. So I'm going to select this requirements model. Surely they'd be interested in that. So I'm going to drag that on there and drop it on there. And you can see that that's been added uh, to the list. Requirements and use case traceability. Uh, one of the executives was, uh, you know, talking about this at length, you know, saying that this was uh, a really useful thing to be able to, you know, trace back from uh, right through from, you know, low level design, but all the way through back up to requirements and even up to strategy. So I'm going to put that one on there as well. And, you know, the other thing is that they really, probably want to have a look at this uh, activity model and, you know, see what's actually going on with uh, with the actual system. So I'll put that in there. And uh, I also put the class model in there because 
you know, I think I think they would be. Everyone's interested in the class model. It's like the the main model there, and you know, that's uh, that's my set now. And I can move those. They've gone in in a, a particular order there, but I can move those around, and I'll say, look, I want to put the requirements model up uh, up first, and so I can uh, you know do that there. Now, um, when I'm going to go in here, I'm going to say um, run slideshow run slideshow, full screen, stop slideshow. Let's look at the properties of that first. And it's called requirements and design. So I've got the ability to change that if, uh, if I'm not happy with it. I've got uh, a timer here to autoplay and it's got enable and I can set that to a particular time. So this is the time, the duration of each, uh, each slide. Uh, so let's have a look at that and we'll say okay to those properties. We're happy with those. And let, let's right mouse click and go um, run the slideshow. So that opens that window up and we count down. We're probably down to two. Uh, one, we're clicking over to the class model. And I'm can talk you to the CXOs. I can say, look, this is a model. Here we have the activity diagram. We can go through that. And you know, that's a useful thing. At any point in time, I can uh, I can stop that, um, stop that video. So let's um let's look at something else. I can run that in full screen mode as well. So I can say, look, you know, we want that to um to run in full screen mode. And again, it's gonna uh, flick through, through through those diagrams at uh, five second intervals. Now, of course, we can set the time on those and say, look, you know, we we don't want those to uh, to run for quite so long. Um, you know, we can uh, we can look at pausing the thing there as well. But let's let that run run its course. And um, so, Stephen, something I've, I've noticed that's interesting with that is uh, with say the uh, the working sets that we looked at last video, where it yep. would open up all the diagrams at once. This one seems to only open up a single diagram, and then when it's done, it closes it, and the next one opens up. So it's not sort of cluttering the view at all. No, and it, it, it's think about it like your favorite presentation tool. Whether you know you're a, a Microsoft person, you use PowerPoint, or a, a Google person, you use their slides technology, or any any one of the other presentation tools. You know those tools allow you to uh, move through um, particular. Um, you know, particular frames or, or screens. So, um, you know, commonly called slides. So that's what this is doing. Um, it's it's acting like, you know, as it's called a slideshow. Uh, and, you know, it's a productivity tool, Tom, because, you know, all too often I, you know, I go to organizations and, you know, everyone gets a bit nervous around the C CXOs and they say, you know, they want a presentation. And actually, you know, I've worked very closely with, with uh, that level um, with executives, and most of the time they're much more pragmatic than that. And if they knew that you were, you know, going off and you know crafting things inside another um, another tool, uh, you know, I, I think they would be, um, you know, they would much be much happier to see you working inside the, this this tool. Now, of course, you can you can do any of that that you want. If I had the class model, I can of course uh, open that class model. And I can publish that in any way I want. I can save it to the clipboard, and that's a typical thing that people do, and they paste it into their PowerPoint thing. But it's much, it's much easier in a way, uh, you know, to work inside the model. And the other thing that happens, Tom, is that you know, the the executives are, you know, they're they're inquisitive, and the the questions they ask are kind of quite often quite lateral, and they may, you know, say, look, exactly what is the parking session? And being in the model and being able to click on it and get, you know, the notes information uh, and take them. Take them to other parts of the model and say, look, you know, this is uh, this is where this is used. Um, the other thing is, I can run this slideshow in uh, in manual form as well, right? So I can go to the properties window and say, look, I don't want that enabled. I'm going to turn off that, and I can um, run the thing manually. So run slideshow there. So I'm in the slideshow, and you know, we can talk about this requirements diagram. We can talk. You know, we might have uh, one of the executives that's um, you know interested in um, the payment processing. Might, have, might come from a financial side of it, you know, a CFO or someone. Uh, and then we can talk about that then. And you notice that my cursor here has got a little tiny arrow on it. If I just use a left click, uh, I can then manually move through to the next slide. So, uh, you know, that's what you would uh, possibly do in a uh, in another tool. And here it is, all that functionality here right uh, here available. And as I said, you know, we're on this slide and the executive's gone, you know, well, what, what exactly, you know, what exactly is happening here? With uh, this, you know, parking meter. So that that's a useful, uh, useful thing. And so that's that's one thing that we've got with our model views. But there's a number of other things as well, Tom. So let's just um, let's just stop this one. We won't go through that. Tend our executives have uh, enjoyed the slideshow now. Um, <laughs> and they would have. They would have indeed. They would have, they, they would have enjoyed it. Yeah. 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 
Um, and let's look at some other things that we can uh, do here. So one of the things that we can do is create another uh, another uh, new views folder. And um, this one I'm going to call um, the our UPM, which is our urban parking meter system. And I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it analysis. And oh, actually, let's 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 go a, another level. Let's call this one uh, deployment, and say that we're design and design and deployment. We'll go down a, a level. So many there are many users uh, of enterprise architect that do you know design and deployment work as well. So let's go okay to that. Um, that's our new new views folder. Now we can now instead of choosing a new slideshow, we can choose a new favorites. Uh, folder. So I can simply go there, put in um, the name of that, and I'm going to call it um, uh, components. And deploy. There and let's um, that's that's now a folder and again, I can drag things from the project browser. So again, probably the class model is something that you know everyone needs to look at and that's going into that uh, list there. And um, the other thing I might want to do is this uh, component model here. Let's drag that component one in there and um, let's drag in the um, composite structure diagram. All these things that are you know level uh, down at the sort of deployment level. And drag those ones in. So now um, I've got um, a set of uh, diagrams there that are my favourites. So you know a useful thing uh, you know to have there that we've got this model views and we've got favourites there, and I can create any number of these, Tom. So um, if I look at this, um, you know these are my my favourites here, and I can just click through them, open them up, and um, you know they're they're available to me. So. Uh, a really useful, a useful thing uh, there with that uh, with those favourites. There is one other thing that I uh, want to look at, and that is uh, the the thing I can put a search in here, and let's put it in at the requirements level here, and um, requirements and design there. It's a slideshow, but let's put it in here at this. Um, oh, actually, no, let's put it in at the design level there, and we'll say a new search folder. So again, we haven't looked at the search facilities, which is definitely the subject for at least one more video, if not a couple of them, because it's a very, very powerful uh, feature. Let's look in this. It's popped up a window and let's put in, um, I'm going to put in the name of it. I'll call it um, financial, uh, financial analysis, something like that. And let's put in a search term of uh, payments. Yeah, uh, so Actually, well, let's put in debits. Let's put in a, a, a debits. We'll be much more specific. So we've got a whole range of different uh, searches we can do there. Uh, and what we can do is look at this, uh, refresh this search. So we want this search to be refreshed. And we can look at how frequently we want that to happen. So uh, let's let's put this up to uh, five seconds and notify me when new results are found. So I'm going to do that and hit OK there. And um, you'll notice now that we've got uh, this search uh, folder. No, no results found. So we might need to change our um, our thing there. And we'll put in um, we'll put in debit. I think it might have been uh, something that I we didn't have debits. We had um, we had debit. So now it's popped up two um, two elements: the payment reader uh, and this uh, payment processing. And both of those have got uh, some mention of the card in. Uh, the notes window there. So the payment reader so, there is talking about. So Stephen, that's that's interesting because um, normally when you do like a search in, in a file system, you're only searching on the file's name, but it seems like with Enterprise Architect, when you do a search, it's going through all the elements metadata. Uh, yeah, Tom, you've just touched um, the tip of the iceberg. Yes, you're, you're absolutely <laughs> right. Um, the search there, and let me bring up the actual search window and you can see here, uh, we've got common searches. Um, and a whole range of different categories of searches there. And then within each category, we've got um, a whole range of actual searches. Now, this simple one here, uh, it's, what it's doing is it's looking at the name, the alias, or the notes. So it's saying if that term appears as an alias or a name uh, or in the notes, 
um, you'll be able to display that. So let's um, that's a, that's an interesting aside, Tom. Let's go back to our um, our model here and let's put on another uh, another class here uh, called debit card. So we might just add to our uh, our class model here. Notice this chevron here is hidden my toolbox away. So that's a, a trick for uh, new newcomers to the tool. A very powerful feature gives you more diagramming space, but I could pop it back out again at any point. I'm going to drop a class on here and I'm going to call it um, debit card. So, you know, that's a reasonably sensible thing to model. I'll just use some of the layout features. I'll use the, the layout to say, you know, same uh, height and width there, and I'll uh, drag that up. Again, um, I might want to look at that and select the, the picker and apply that color uh, to that. And I'll associate, um, you know, that debit card uh, to the card read. And of course, we would have had it, we'd have the credit card as well. Now, if you look back here, Tom, at um, our list of things, if someone had done that in the background, imagine that uh, one of the other modelers had put that debit card on there and you were looking at your, uh, your focus view and your uh, model views, uh, suddenly uh, this one here has popped up. Hmm. And the debit card, because it meets the, uh, the requirements of that, uh, of that search. And so um, you're able to see that. So it's a very powerful uh, way using the search facility to keep a track of, you know, what's going on. So you might have a search that was looking at, you know, um, components that are new, that are of a particular type, um, a new being they've been created, uh, you know, since a particular date, for example, or in the last, you know, couple of days. And, you know, that can keep you up to date without having to, you know, go through the model, which of course you can do. You can navigate through the model. You could look at it. The collaboration features might have uh, told you that, you know, someone was working on a new part of the system. But this is a much kind of quicker uh, and very uh, obvious way for you to be able to see what's changing in the model. I'd uh, very much like to revisit this feature when we do have a look at the search windows, because I think from what I understand that the, the, the searching component of Enterprise Architect can be very, very powerful and combined with something that's going to run that search on a regular basis and, and notify me when something's changed, uh, I'm I'm excited. I reckon that's going to be awesome. Um, yeah, Tom, it's one of the features that um, I like most about Enterprise Architect. I, I, it would be difficult for me to kind of list all the things that I, uh, I like because I use them all in in, in different ways, right? I, I'm I'm using a particular feature to uh, to get productivity. I'm using another feature to get quality. I'm using another uh, feature to you know to um, make an impactful design, to reach stakeholders, to collaborate. You know, the list just goes on, Tom. But yes. The search window is used in it in itself as a powerful way of finding something, locating something, but it also pops up in a number of other places uh, that you can use that functionality to you know to drive productivity. Sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. Well, thank you very much, Stephen. Um, that was uh, that that was very cool. That's very cool. I I do get excited as we start scratching the surface and digging a little bit deeper on on the other features that, that, that come with Enterprise Architect. Uh, appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure, Tom. And thanks to everyone uh, out there in YouTube land for, for watching along and commenting and subscribing to the videos. We'll catch you all tomorrow for another video. Talk to you then.